Hello, I'm Vinny Fury, AKA Vince the Voice. I would like to share with you the story of my friend, JC Wyatt. As you know, she is running for governor of Connecticut. And when she's elected, she will make history by becoming the first transgender woman to become governor in our country. As a citizen running for this office, she has also recognized the pain of taxation the state's residents have felt, and she's determined to make Connecticut a great state again. Her story begins in Connecticut in 1971. JC was born at Yale New Haven Hospital in New Haven to Lucille and Salvatore Pascarella. She was raised in the town of Brantford, but the JC you know grew up as a male by the name of John which for the time being was a name because John was born having both chromosomes and being of both sexes, a hermaphrodite. He related to not only having either sex growing up. Growing up and going to school in Brantford, it was the girls in the neighborhood that set her values and acceptance to the world. Her best friends were accepting and they had many great adventures growing up in their neighborhood together. Sledding, roller skating, walking to the center of town, recreating Greece as a play, just because they could. Sleepovers and pancake breakfasts were a regular event. She always had female voice and features, even in high school, and it had never changed, but life has ups, downs, and she lived through many hard and emotional times that only made her strong, brave, and the woman who could lead us today. Eventually, she found herself focused on being an architect. She studied hard-built projects and made honors in school. She was spending more time drawing and building with Lego blocks that eventually became a model city to play with in the basement for her neighborhood friends. Coming up together, imagination and ingenuity was paramount as her family had limited funds, but a great supportive balance of family and friends in her life. Many called her Jay or JC, which really wasn't a boy's name, but a girl's name as she was more a girl than a boy and was raised on great American brands like Barbie, Lego, and Easy Bake Oven. She didn't relate to the boy things growing up and her family didn't push her to. They left the boys things to do to her older brother, Robert. She didn't play sports in school. She was even excused from activities where gender could cause issue at school through doctor's notes that saved embarrassment in gym class and locker rooms. Her determination to be great in business became reality when she led the class of 1989 to one of the most successful advertising and sponsorship for the Brantford High School class when she got the high honor to be the business editor for her high school class and yearbook. She received thanks from her classmates and school by gaining a scholarship from Brantford PTA Council, Public School Scholarship Fund Veterans of World War II for $600 and was also awarded the Milestone Award from the contributions to the Milestone Yearbook. She even received a letter from the first selectman, Judy Gott, thanking her for her hard work and wished her great success in her higher education studies in college and hoped she reached her goals. The day she finally recognized that his gender was about to change forever was the day her high school yearbook picture was taken. Her hair was cut short and she realized she was acting apart for the photo. It was her being a him, but it just wasn't. It was right after this that she started the process with the aid of doctors to transition into a woman, the beautiful woman that she had always been inside. She was undergoing some major changes in her life, naturally in cosmetic, hormone therapy, three nose rhinoplasties, and other cosmetic facial corrections, a legal name change where the name J.C. Wyatt became legal, which was inspired from one of her favorite movies growing up, Baby Boom. And with the completion of all the surgeries and procedures, and with local support of her loving family and friends, she found herself looking across Long Island Sound where she saw not just a new world to explore and be part of, but a place where she would become herself, in the bustling metropolis of New York City, a city that symbolized America's greatness. As she committed to finding the greatness within herself, she found herself looking homeward again to Connecticut and a bigger and greater picture for what her home could be. JC's first job was at Connecticut Hospice and this wonderful place symbolized life forever, and the co-workers were some of her best advocates to be happy in yourself. She initially started with her immediate surroundings in Brantford and involving herself in her community using her self-taught value skills acquired while visiting New York City almost every week, but soon saw a need to open the window to the even bigger picture. She wanted to make Connecticut whole again to be the best place to live in and call home. JC loved to go to New York City, and she started taking her mom, cousins, and friends on trips to the city so JC could explore more and more. 
One of the most fascinating things that shows how involved to learn and listen is JC can point to a skyscraper in New York City and tell you who built it, designed it, and what company is based in it. She couldn't wait to see the city, the buildings, and the people made her feel that this is where she belonged. Eventually, a developer named Donald Trump became her idol as he inspired her to be one day building skyscrapers and great developments like him because she saw his buildings being built all over the city that she spent years exploring the city. Yes, our president today inspired her and was part of the reason why she picked the New York Institute of Technology in Manhattan, where she would get a five-year bachelor's degree in architecture, and she studied in the interior design and landscape architecture fields, graduating cum laude with her class in Long Island in May of 1995. Her father was a Connecticut state worker and was the greatest supporter in JC's life, even till his death in 2003. Her father was at every doctor appointment, surgery, and he became her biggest advocate in accepting his son that had become his daughter to the town that John had left and JC had returned to. Her mother was a banker, high school office assistant, retired in the insurance business, who had also had inspirations to run as a Democrat for political office in Brantford, which eventually became the key family influence that made JC want to continue her mother's footsteps. JC learned about leadership early in her life and her life experience proves that. Overcoming the differences and struggles with her gender were never known to people she went to college with as she became captain of her public speaking class and was chosen lead designer in her architecture classes. With her strong natural skills to help others design floor plans and building models, her professors saw that she was going to be a successful student and eventually she was in the top 2% of her school with a 4.0 GPA for almost every semester over the five years attending college. She learned the construction and building business working at a development office in New York City by being an architect's assistant. While working on her architecture dreams, there was one other big dream in her life that she wanted to pursue, to be a professional fashion model. From one chance meeting with a photographer on 7th Avenue, she learned and taught herself the world of modeling, finance, and business, and brand building her name and image. She was the brand. JC would start to brand herself over the next 20 years to become a nationally known model hired all over the country by international fashion and swimwear companies. Even the fashion icons chose her to be the woman the companies wanted to represent them. She made a lucrative living in the modeling industry, traveling up to 200 plane trips each year all over the world, amassing over 200,000 photos of herself in just about every state, city, island, and exotic location. How many other women do you know that have 400 pairs of shoes and 1,800 bikinis in her wardrobe? She invested most of her modeling money into her first business in 1995 called J.C. Wyatt Signatures. Her greeting card business, which grew from the online phase with the jcwyatt.com website to the J.C. Wyatt Corporation for many years to come, which branded into many products, company names, and successful projects. Giraffe Kids Coloring Cards is J.C. Wyatt's children's creative greeting card that a child can color with crayons. Her determination and unique ideas in business put her J.C. Wyatt company up against another competing greeting card companies. Her long hours, hard work, and determination was rewarded in 1997 when her company won Best New Kicks product at the National Stationery Show at the Javits Convention Center in New York City. J.C. faced a decision, join her family in Connecticut, and dream big or make it in the greatest city in the world. The decision was easy. She returned to Connecticut. JC's first notable project was less about renovating a building than helping clients rediscover its soul in her designs. The once great John Tyler House circa 1710 in Brantford languished in a rundown neighborhood on East Main Street was her drive, backing restoration and imagination that would be necessary. The owner chose JC Wyatt. JC convinced the banks that they had a moral obligation to invest in her plan and ideas and negotiated with the landlord and the town, jump-starting a project and creating new construction, retail, and community service jobs. JC's striking new building called the House of JC Wyatt Country Store, which once lay dormant for years, now revitalized the neighborhood. JC grew her company brands 
and kept adding more and more products and brands, including the Nut House collection. Her incredible packaging of nuts into tins that resembled paint cans, having the color of the graphics on the labeling to match the nut. These became yearly corporate gifts, being shipped all over the United States by leading corporate CEOs and company owners. JC became the woman to go to in the corporate gifts market, and she added yearly more and more companies calling her to be the holiday gifts. This success started her favorite business, putting her love of business and food together, and she added a new product, the famous two pound Mrs. Printable Caramel Chocolate Covered Apples, and her business grew to six digit revenues a year in sales, selling over 36,000 apples a year, growing the company and create jobs in Brantford. The success and incredible mind she has for marketing the vision of her own products being made with her name on it. JC Wyatt Chocolatier Company was born from her love for gourmet foods, her handsome chocolates, truffles, chocolate-covered apples, chocolate-drizzled popcorn fudge, and more was the tastiest addition to the J.C. Wyatt Corporation Company. She respected her town's history, and with her brilliant business and marketing mind living in one of the oldest structures in Brantford, to develop a successful business, she became the vice president of the Brantford Historical Society. Being one of the youngest members ever to be on the board, her incredible interest in Brantford history helped her to inspire relationships, bring people together, and lead the group with her new ideas and bring new fresh ideas to people that respected her. She was at town events, lectures, and worked with local town leadership to be involved in the town. She even got approval to get all the historical photos of the town scanned for digital protections from her determination and leadership to get the committee to agree and let her ensure the protection of these giant great images and history photos of the town and its people to be cherished for generations to come. She developed a development called Brantford Village and a tourism destination that is educational, historical, preservation focused around the 18th century, King's Highway, and she called it Brantford Village. She put in over 10 years and growing of planning, research, drawings, and marketing packets, and even held the campaign for Brantford Village lectures at the James Blackstone Library. JC's love of Brantford in the state of Connecticut became another business under the main JC Wyatt Corporation, with her decades of years of being in front of the camera and her incredible vision and insight of what you see in a camera she created, Brantford Pictures, and she became the photographer, taking thousands of pictures of buildings and places she traveled to, and the town of Brantford and its charming little town districts were created in yearly calendars and digitalized pictures into photo CDs that you can watch on your computer and online. She is a leader. She is a person that will bring the people of out of state together in people and personally from a career that is big business in the United States. Not to mention she was photographed and filmed so much she won Bikini International Awards multi-times. JC even started Connecticut Fashion Week and received a state proclamation from former Governor Judy Rell in 2009. JC, a visionary and smart woman, tied her state relationships and business marketing to turn our state from border to border, including many towns and cities in the state of Connecticut, to become part of the week-long event of fashion runway shows, promotions, photo shoot competitions, bus tours, and nightlife, and thousands of models came together to work with her, and so did the businesses, seeing her vision to turn around something so basic that wasn't being done in Connecticut the business of modeling and tourism into a combination that made a new movement in the state. Modeling was easy to J.C. Wyatt. It came natural, and she brought together people that could learn the career to be a model and offered 100 contracts at her Wyatt Modeling Agency. And she worked personally with women and men and taught them the secrets to get top modeling jobs, acting in commercials, create comp cards, websites, get casting calls to top New York City and Connecticut jobs, and let her modeling and film clients get opportunities into a great career that was inspiring. Connecticut Fashion Week may have just been a one-week event, but Wyatt Agency was a year-long business that did the same thing, bringing talent and jobs together. She even saw radio, something she could put her name on, and of course she did, Wyatt Radio. She hosted radio shows and interviewed new unknown music artists and launched their careers with radio exposure. She even asked her models from her modeling agency to participate with her on radio shows where they answered questions that were sent to her online. Before long, more J.C. Wyatt buildings helped change the neighborhoods by renovating more historical buildings and storefronts in Brantford and East Haven, Connecticut. 
J.C. Wyatt Coffee in the Old Mill Country Store with Penny Candy and Eden and Out Shop where you can buy food to her clothing line products. Not to mention the talk of the town, palm trees, and tropical gardens at the house she grew up at. She likes new, fresh, and unique ideas and will push the test of time to get what she wants. She is serious and always makes happen what she said she will do. Building in Connecticut was not easy, and JC was never more frustrated than watching the town waste 10 years and $20 million to eminent domain, the local town dump trying to rebuild many industrial and town facility buildings that didn't belong on the property. JC was astounded. It took her only five months to build JC Wyatt's first store. So she stepped in, took over the project design. In just one month, she designed, drew up the plans, and made the presentation to town officials of the ideas to build an 18-hole golf course on the site, coming in under budget and with a potential tax revenue return to the town of two million a year on a property that is currently costing the town 20 million and rising. She took over another town meeting and caught the ear of the first local selectman, Anthony DeRoss, who listened to her and made many in town wake up and see that this was a project tied up in red tape, but that it was a great idea and should be built. She impressed thousands of people in the town of Brantford with this plan and the neighbor residents supported her. JC's plan transformed the landfill into a championship public golf course and would have saved the town millions. But what happened next? A Republican won the next election. And afterward, this plan and its valuable tax revenue idea was dropped. And to date, nothing was ever built on the site under the current political administration. She started and hosted a local TV show called Visit Brantford, where she would create monthly informational business and real estate developments, shows at BC TV studios in Brantford. Being in front of the camera for years made it easy for her to become the producer and director of new TV shows and of course volunteer endless hours at the studio. She created new shows never seen before from her unique vision and leadership time to develop new visional shows that thousands of Brantford residents watched on local cable television. JC joined the Republican Town Committee and they asked her to run for tax collector and for the RTM in Brantford. Even during the election season, she would be in the studio working behind the scenes to develop new information TV shows to let Brantford residents know where she stood on the local politicians. She speaks her mind and shares the concerns at local meetings and was honored to put in hundreds of hours of volunteer time a year to the town of Brantford at many town committees, garden club, library fair, and town clean litter pickups. She is also a member of the Brantford Parks and Open Space Authority and was appointed by both the Democrats and Republicans for two terms. So if you have not got it by now that there is nothing JC can't do that she doesn't set her mind to, and many know when she says she's going to do something, she follows through and makes it happen. She is a woman that can do many things at once, and her ability to be accurate and accountable, to oversee her business empire, and growth closely and do unlimited aspects to go from meeting to meeting, projects to projects, hour to hour, is a talent that you don't see in many these days, but she can. Her incredible time management will set her up to be an incredible governor like no other candidate. But the most important thing to know about JC is that she listens to the people and genuinely wants to help and is asking for you to help her become the next governor of Connecticut because she is ready to listen to you. Today she's not only put herself firmly on the path to governor, but also put herself under fire, stating boldly she can and she will turn Connecticut around. JC could have continued her successful career and spent more time with her mother, traveled to her home in Scottsdale, Arizona, but instead, she has made the choice to run for governor and make Connecticut a place people are proud to call home again. JC will bring Connecticut revenue income from $17.3 billion to a $89 billion a year increase from tourism developments and letting the state be the focus of what makes it great and let Connecticut location in New England, the family, lifestyle from waterfront to hills, the great place to stay and live natural resource that many of us call home and love about the state. The responsibility to respect our history and see the path of our future. J.C. Wyatt has the experience to be our governor. She has the negotiation skills to work together across all parties, the vision to bring a new Connecticut future, bring communities together, and 10 years of experience of working with budgets from business and construction background, her well-organized thoughts, spokesperson, and represent us with her image and name. Keep the economy growing and jobs and big and small business growth all over Connecticut. Simple fact, she could govern, and her life experiences qualifies her to be a governor like no other in this state has ever seen before. JC has time and again proven that she is a brave, strong woman who never gives up. 
she just doesn't let no be the final answer. She will tell you her secret for success is a strong team and well thought out plan. JC has said she admires people who put themselves directly on a path they wish to pursue and take a chance on something they believe in wholeheartedly. Being a governor, she has put her years of design and construction into the future plans for the state and her incredible gift to think of the future and her vision to build at 80 billion a year in new tax revenue to the state. The Nutmeg Mall Resort, a four season family world destination surrounded by the largest indoor outdoor mall, beachfront lakes, water park, amusement park, film studios, theme park, vineyard resort collections, the best wineries, lakefront hotel and resorts, golf courses, high-end and world-class retail stores, department stores, and anchor headquarters attractions. What is better than visiting the Nutmeg Mall Resort, staying there, residences, and there's even a ski resort. And JC is the right woman that has been missing from Connecticut governing, and it's time for that change in the state, because she will get this done for the people of Connecticut, because she sees the new Connecticut future and will lead the projects that she has put in two decades of research to build this amazing new place. We need to remember our history, we need to preserve it, and we need to grow and see tourism and economic development back into the strengths of towns, economics, and make Connecticut a destination again. The new Connecticut future isn't just getting the strength of the Connecticut financials, but to bring change to tax regulations, restrictive laws, and bring better quality of life to the people of Connecticut. Twin Harbors Airport is an economic future of Connecticut, bringing billions of new tax revenue to the state. The futuristic development that brings travel to a new international airport that transports 45 million visitors a year in and out of Connecticut, including an airport redevelopment transport system, hub for planes, trains, and a cargo crate port destination that will all be part of the new Connecticut future. JC will tell you what a great state this is and how important it is to work. She wants to inspire people and make working toward the greater goals for Connecticut hopeful. I know JC Wyatt will be that governor that can do this. She can give us that hope again. She can give us pride in being an American again. She can make us feel like what we should feel like to be a nutmeggers again and a true patriot. We're exceptionally lucky people living in this beautiful state and have JC Wyatt to stand up and come forward to make it great for all of us. JC Wyatt is a leader, not a politician. She will be honest with the people. She will stop wasteful government spending of our tax dollars. She will cut our taxes, create jobs, and rebuild our broken economy. She will lead this state, not continue to follow in its broken footsteps or apologize for bringing big changes to the state for success. She will always put our needs and interests first, whether it's development tourism plans and deals or standing up to political rhetoric. As she has done so many times before, she will stand up for the people of Connecticut represent them and defend them all over our state, and she will protect us. She will bring about the change that this state so desperately needs and get the job done. It's been a long time since we've had a governor like that. JC Wyatt, it's time for change. It's time for Connecticut to be your home again and let her lead us on the new Connecticut future. We have the opportunity and the responsibility to think big and to make bold changes that will improve the lives of the people of Connecticut. It is going to be a big job, but I will put the right people in place to help me together to offer new plans, ideas that will change Connecticut in a whole different direction. But together, I will be the governor who says and does what I say I will do. Why? Because that is my nature and background, to be upfront, strong, brave, and fearless to stand up to the opposition and negotiate better deals and savings that will look out for the citizens of the state of Connecticut. It's time to elect J.C. Wyatt for governor of Connecticut.